Green. So here are our crossbones on Nautilus. That's in the top left side. Our red Protoss from Team NV is Creator. Taking on, in the bottom right-hand corner, our teal Terran player from the Shopify Rebellion. It is Beyond. As uh, they say hi to each other, apparently. <laughs> so uh, Bjorn, apparently they share the same name, so Bjorn said, Hey, creator, basically, or hey, our names. And I said, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Why are you so sad? <laughs> I always love a little bit of a loom league banter here. Creator and Bjorn playing a five-map series. Again, this is five games played no matter what. And uh, we do... I've had, we've had the, both these guys get 4 one by DRG. DRG looked great. Beyond TVZ at times looked inspiring, sometimes looked hopeful. Creator's BVZ also looked like he just rolled over and died a bunch, so it'll be interesting to see how their TVP plays against each other. As uh, they continue to banter back and forwards a little bit to start off our game. <laughs> Now look at these guys just acting on with each other, huh? Again, that's part of what makes Lima League so fun. The players feel very free to be, you know, to be open, to have some fun, to mess around a little bit and stuff. It's, uh, it's good to see that, right? That's only really a good thing, I would say. Rob is off on a wonder. Heading around to the uh, top side, chilling out there a little bit. So yeah, Probe having a nice little scout around. Obviously, uh, Bjorn just sitting in the center of the map. Probe is going to come back down here. Gun doesn't uh, know where his opponent spawned yet. He's just sitting in the middle of the map, and he has gone for this kind of wall off into high ground expansion himself. So, bit of a mind game to create. Create doesn't know if he's being super aggressive. He doesn't know if there's, you know, follow up behind this. The starboard timing probably tells him a fair amount, though, right? Probably tells him a good little bit of, hey, what, what am I maybe expecting from you right here? What exactly is happening? So that's something to to maybe look at and think about. As you see a couple more Widow Mines already coming through. So again, a couple of Widow Mines following the two Hellions. Now, Widow Mines aren't super the norm uh, per se right away, but... Uh, well, I guess the two Hellions, two Widow Mines are okay, but then to go for Viking, that's not the norm, right? To go for the Viking on top of that, that part of it's definitely pretty weird, as this hallucination of Kareda is going to come across to try and get some extra info. So Kareda's opening, by the way, is four gates and a robo. So he's going to be pretty aggressive against Bjorn, and Bjorn has been fairly well known to be doing stuff of this style recently, this kind of setup, so maybe Creator knows that, sees the setup, and says, right, if you're going to do a setup like this, I will just get aggressive against you, come and try and kill you. The Viking is seen by the hallucination, that doesn't necessarily help too much, although it is nice against a prism, because it can obviously push the prism back. You do see the possibility of this being Banshees, but we cancel that, we make a Raven instead, so... We decide against Banshees, and that's just a fake out to maybe make Creator leave units at home, or maybe prepare to deal with Banshees when they won't actually arrive. That's always nice to be doing. As I do, I also just have a couple of Widow Mines moving forward to the center, however, Reaper and Hellion. I'm just going to have to back away from that. So Beyond's not done much so far, and now we've got Creator on the attack with a lot of units, really. I mean, Prism's popped out. I mean, the biggest thing right now is actually just dealing with these Widow Mines. He's going to lose one Stalker. Now, the other Stalker takes a lot of hits before it's uh, going to get protected by its buddies. You kill off, I mean... You kill off a lot of these early units, sure. But that's two Stalkers down. Like I say, you need to save another Stalker here. You can't let this Widow Mine connect as well. Creator just running through. He would have thought after the first Widow Mine, he might be more careful about this second Widow Mine. But apparently not. Just takes the hits. Will warp adapts into the main base. There's now a tank and a raven now. Bunker only just starting though, but and can you imagine there was like three more stalkers in play on the natural? I feel like you probably you can probably fight this. 
His adepts are going to shade. Where do you shade to for the best? Shades to the corner. That might have been the moment to go. You shade to the corner, the tank fires at you, and then the stalks can maybe make their move onto that tank on the front, stop the bunker getting up. Now it feels like you've not really done much across the map. The Viking is getting turned away by stalkers as the Viking had a battery to contend with in that mineral line, so it didn't get many workers when it landed. Prism harassing the main. I don't like this at all for Kareda, because you're ending up on a Robotech with no Twilight or anything. And that's really bad for you over time here, so... Yeah, I don't like this at all for Grid. It feels like he's got basically no tech, right? Like, Robotech is, like, a, a weird one, because it's like, yeah, you get Observers, you get Vision, you get a Prism, but none of this helps you in the larger fight further down the line. And he's not done anything to slow Bjorn down from being able to set up into a larger fight down the line. That's definitely got to be major cause for concern. I think he has some SCVs here, perhaps, as finally Kareda might find some, some actual damage, because a lot of he's been able to do so far didn't feel like this is all that great for SCVs go down. As the Stalkers lift up and back away, just going to see that charge coming through on the Twilight Council as well, and a couple of Adepts, they are going to make their shade. Through the natural up into the main, Marines and a Marauder there will not allow those Adepts to commit through. This Banshee wants to make a play. Obviously, no cloak. This was just a Banshee added on, you know, past the fact a little bit earlier. Flies into a couple of Stalkers, which he'll get two probes against and then get into the main. There's a battery in the main, so it shouldn't do any further damage. In fact, it will mostly just scout and uh, uh, intercept on the natural, I suppose. Yeah, that's the end of the Banshee, but I mean, didn't feel like that Banshee had a lot of hope. Still didn't do, like, much, considering you, you know, spent an entire Banshee on it, so... That's something as our prism. And these other few units will continue to pull away to the upper left hand side. Temple Archives coming out for your Zelda, Immortal, plus one, and charge. All of that continuing through. These two Zelda's going to finish up. We'll see a few more. Obviously, charge will be ready shortly. As Bjorn gets pushing now, he's left his tanks and ravens at home, so it's not going to be any sort of a serious push. If anything, this is just a little bit of a poke at the front. Stem a bit, trade out slightly, and then back away. Let's pull everything back towards this third base now. And yeah, we just kind of set up to go from here. Oh, three bases each. Again, kind of an interesting early game where Kareda felt like his kind of initial setup really flopped, but... Bjorn didn't do anything to take advantage of that. We'll see if he does a bit further down the line now as tanks siege up across the natural on the third base. This may be a bit of a better setup to potentially get something done here as we do see the Zealot Stalker poised to push on in. So in we go as the Observer gets shot down. The Raven is uh, settling up as well. Here we go, our unit's going to start charging forward, and anti armor missile hits just the first few zeldas. There is a second one that hits almost everything, uh-oh. Well, here we go as we start to micro the prism as well. The SCVs get pulled into this fight pretty late. Now running towards an Archon ain't pretty. I mean, it's kind of a complete mess of a fight altogether, right? We drop a feedback on the Raven way after it was past its kind of usage. I mean, this war prism should go down now as well, though he actually pulled one of the Vikings back, so he didn't get the kill on it. Beyond making a little bit of a micro mistake there, as he'll turn back around now for a few more Stalkers and Zealots, and there's no tech in this army anymore. Prism might still get away. Real shame to let that Prism live. It really could have been dead there, and removing the Prism removes some of the reinforcements. Okay, it does go down at the end. That's good, because obviously you don't want this to get away. You want to have that dead. You don't have to, you know, you don't want to have to deal with the counterattacks of the War Prism or anything along those lines. Those are always going to be bad for you. As the bio collects in the center and even more marine marauder just gonna slip through to the middle of the map to join up with the rest of the forces there. These zealots, well, they are set up off to the right, the stalker and archon up front. And Dion is gonna keep on pushing as a 30 army supply lead. If he can fight outside of battery range, then he should be golden with the amount of units that he has. Obviously, zealots will slow down this a lot. And turns around just as he reaches the acceleration zone. I know you're getting further away from your defenses, but it almost feels as though that's when you do fight, when you've got the Zealots able to catch up again. 
Archon and Immortal go down again. We're losing the tech here as creator, and that's just irreplaceable as Bjorn is going to win the first game. That counterattack going well for him in the end. Game one going the way of Bjorn. Not the Alimo League. Just a little reminder. Again, okay, exclamation mark Alimo League in the chat if you want to get over to their Patreon page. Your support does keep this tournament series ongoing. Bottom right, the blue Protoss player from Team NV. We have got Creator. Up against the Red Terran, top left-hand side from the Shopify Rebellion. Beyond. Game two of our series. Let's see what we will get out of this. As again, if you're enjoying the cast and the stream today, do hit that follow button. See when we're live again in the future. If I'm not mistaken, I think we counted this up yesterday. We do not have a day without StarCraft on the stream. Or there may be like one day where I'm doing DreamHack and I'm not streaming. But in general, I'm doing StarCraft every day for the next one, two, three weeks. Until the 27th of October, I believe, is our next current day off from StarCraft. So... All of that in mind. Make sure you're following the channel to see when we go live with it all. See our factory starting up, Orbital Command coming through. There's a pylon over here from Creator, so he is getting very aggressive very early. Is it time for some Stargates action here on Lightshade? It may very well be. As we've got ourselves. There you go, a Stargate being placed. So away we go. A Stargate down and working forward from here. We got a battery going next to it as well. The probe going to rally down the map a bit. And this marine is actually going to look to intercept any sort of proxy. <gasps> Seize the probe. That's a really big scout because now you know where the probe is. There's only so much more to be done. Beyond, by the way, one base opening. So already in the right direction here is this probe. Thumbs up. Beyond has it cornered. So obviously this is delaying the factory from landing though. So at least you're delaying unit production. So that is actually something as this probe goes down that creator can look at and say, well, that's another positive to add onto the, you know, onto the list of things at the moment. Of course, Bjorn has not scoured properly, so he has no idea about this first Void Ray. And that might be the kind of the killing part of this for him, because he just doesn't know that, um, he just doesn't know that this is happening. Like, he has got no idea, and he's got two Hellions into more Hellions. Like, his setup, in theory, should be great, but because he doesn't know, he's just got no anti uh, I mean, Medivac's building and Armory's on the way, and the freaking Void Ray shows up. Well, John, what the hell do you do about this? He just told us should buy a lottery ticket tomorrow, but, uh... Well, maybe you should buy some Bunkers, Cyclones, Vikings right now, because they would actually help him win this game. Then he might have some money to win, buy a lottery ticket as well, because... He would win some for winning this game right now. He is just gonna die. Marines are dying. I mean, the thing is, the there's an engineering bay building, which is really like a desperation play at this kind of point. I mean, you've got two voids here going to sit on the starport. They're going to not insta-kill the Viking. It actually does get away, but locked onto it. Yeah, Vince is going to type GG. He was blind to this proxy void ray opening. And Creator takes full advantage and cashes in. In the bottom left-hand corner of the map, we have got our blue Terran player, uh... He might want to start scouting in the rest of this series. It is Bjorn in the bottom left from the shot Shopify Rebellion. At least at the Shotify Rebellion. The Shopify Rebellion, guys. Top right, our red Protoss player from Team NV. Creator. Hopefully his nerves aren't... Uh... Two in the gutter after dropping a map to me. Beautiful stuff. I, mean, I, I Honestly, I just built my first SCV again, and they left the game. I built my first SCV, they leave the game. I know they should be scared. I mean, they don't want to lose to a caster, but I mean, they're more than just scared right now. They're freaking terrified. They're terrified, I'm telling you. SCV is chasing the probe. 
a little bit of early game back and forth. So we're probably going to take some shots, SCV, taking some nibbles, see what we get out of Oblivion. Game 1 was actually pretty cool, I kind of like Game 1, obviously Game 2 is one to gloss over, not much to talk about there, no scout, proxy void rate, all good. SCV is chasing and nibbling. Command center will start on the natural. And we are just going to be seeing our cyber call. Going to be done soon, obviously, with the nexus behind it. So we get that established already as well here from Creator. That's still just looking pretty reasonable across the board in general, I'd say, right? Nothing really too wild this far. Probe all the way back up here, and is going to drop the Stargate down, so we are going to be seeing him commit into a Stargate opening. Always good to know. Uh, very standard opening Stargate. I mean, Blink obviously has been the go-to and the real golden standard of PVT for recent, uh, for some recent times, but I don't mind going for the Stargate here. I like going for the Stargate, actually. Alien on the way up here from beyond, the starboard coming down. Yeah, see our command center they're going to finish up on the natural in a few moments, so we'll have that completing. And an orbital going to start morphing in as Marines and a Hellion will get set up as well. Hellion just going to move out onto the map. Obviously that can give you some scouting information, which is always good. I have got a Phoenix in production, so he's kind of stacking Phoenix here. Now, when you stack Phoenix, you're typically looking to use the Phoenix as a bit of a surprise factor. That gets ruined by this Hellion getting in and obviously scouting. Hellion should be lifted here because then you don't get the final shot, which would obviously kill probes, pulls the damage probe away even, and actually your Phoenix just pops to get the kill, so... Nice uh, safe play from Creator, but yeah, now you kind of know that it's Phoenix here as Pion. Well... It wasn't going to be like a blind Widow Mine drop anyway. He was heading into Marines, one Widow Mine into Cyclone. Uh, now he can go into Viking Cyclone knowing, of course, exactly what is up, but it wasn't going to be the best setup from Creator, anyways. Ideally, you build Blind Phoenix, and what you end up against is a bunch of. Um, this is like a two or three Widow Mine drop. It flies in, you kill everything for free, and that's a really good start. The Phoenix got on the map, and they have map control to harass with. So that's typically what happens. These two Phoenix end up backing away. Back through to the top side. Now I've got a uh, second cycle coming up. Obviously, you're going to have to be really careful here as Creator because Bjorn is pushing, and I actually don't like it for Creator. He's building a third Nexus and a Robo Bay. So you're building tech, and as well as tech, you're going into this. Um, I mean, you're, you're teching and building the base, and Bjorn knows what you're doing, so he's been able to create a good army comp against you. And Bion is uh, going to turn it around and not commit to the attack across the map, but there's absolutely potential for some real danger there, honestly. I could have gone very wrong very quickly, to be honest. For, um... For creator. I think it's fortunate that Bion doesn't attack. What did he actually have? He has three adepts and two stalkers, I guess, but... I mean, the marine count's pretty high as the starport finishes. It's not a game where you build a uh, raven, because obviously you're playing against Phoenix and playing uh, Raven against Phoenix is just asking for them to get shut down as the Phoenix right now do get chased away up that left side. Did not lose any. The Widow Mine shot initially set him Bjorn up to maybe find some really good value there, but obviously doesn't quite happen in the end. That was a good first Widow Mine shot though. Definitely set you up in the right sort of direction, didn't it? Well, again, Stimpak, Combat Shields, and the plus one attack upgrade. They are all making their way through, so... Bringing all of that up as the gateways and Colossus in production as well. Plus one attack and the extended thermal lance on the way out.
His Marine's kind of pushing with this medevac. Into... Maybe get in position, but I don't think you actually try and fight at all here as Bjorn until your upgrades are done. Nonsensical, right? To try and take a fight before you have stim and combat shields when they're so close to being done as well. Why well, give up the bio units that are going to have a power spike, you know, less than a minute from now? Doesn't really make any sense at all. Down the rocks on the right, the Cyclone actually finds this Adept, which will kill an SCV. Now, SCV, I believe, was the one on the way to build the third CC, so hopefully Bjorn realizes looks like he has, and he is sending that new SCV over to get the third base started. He's going to push around the right side, drop potential into the main from this position, but no pressure on the third. And it's obviously going to be kind of the weird in-between that you put yourself in. So we'll see what he does. The units are just stacked on the natural. Obviously, dropping to the main would not be brilliant either right now with that Phoenix count. Oh, he lifts up anyway. Well, uh, this obviously just wasn't quite it. Now we are going to see the units at least get into the main without being having the medevac shot down. So that's something. Colossi are going to run up this ramp or this uh, cliff edge to do something as well. But because Crater just saw it coming from a mile away, this never really looked to be all that meaningful as... The Widow Mines get cleaned out, the Medivacs do make a timely escape, will not be caught in the main base or escape in the main base by the Phoenix. So that is all very good news. As you do see Twilight Council Forge, the War Prism, all of that still continuing up as well. So a lot of that being brought into play as we got ourselves. The units of Courage is going to sit out the front and Yon is looking to bring more units to the top side of the map. Looking to make a push right now actually and maybe jump on top of... This army is still going to be aggressive. I mean, to be fair, he didn't lose a lot during that last fight, which, I mean, genuinely, I am a little bit surprised about. I thought he was going to do much worse there, but, he, well, he didn't. As we unload and we pick off a Zealot already. More mules down onto the third base as well. SCV is going to move over. Plus two attack coming up on the forge. The charge upgrade, the plus one armor all coming in. A lot of setup right now as our first probe gets shot down, and I'm just going to get that wood of mine burrowed up as well. i to drop a ghost in the back, academy in the back here, so Bjorn is at least teching up. He's not just going to stick on bio. I think one of the biggest criticisms of Bjorn lately has got to be that sometimes he will just build bio, stick to bio units, and, and just not move away from that, right? But uh, I feel like the last couple of weeks especially, he's been absolutely kind of been open arms to teching a little bit more than he was previously. Uh, it definitely feels like there's been some progress in that regard, at least, as we do see the bio units. Yeah, actually catching a few units. Zealots, sentries, colossus getting turned around. Getting chased back up that ramp. Get the hell out of here, they say. An attempt to take a fourth base. Now, there is an attack in the main base of Bjorn as well, so something he'll have to deal with. But Prism never unloaded just yet, so actually... Not an issue for now, as we will slip this probe by. Wouldn't mind get the fourth started. There was already a probe here. He's like, wait, why aren't you building the base? <laughs> you lazy little probe. I walked all the way over here. I summoned the energy to warp in a whole nexus. And you were just here already. Well, it's going to get cancelled right away. And both the probes will go down. So caught squabbling. Both are, <laughs> are killed and sent back to Aya. There's our... Phoenix now again, just patrolling around the center, seeing if they can catch anything else going on here. But I think the reality is, they don't really have much chance to catch anything just yet. Uh, there's a group of units still down the right-hand side that will not engage anything just yet as well. And that ghost upgrade is still coming through, so improving position at the moment here from Bjorn. Gonna see Vikings by units all moving into the middle of the map again, collecting everything together as they got a few zealots looking for the counterattack, so on the way to make some moves, hitting this third base, and Bjorn gonna have to deal with that while of course looking to also push. Let's see how well he can do with this as we do see the zealots shut down pretty easily though, so nothing really too crazy. Now the larger army's moving in position, great initial EMPs. It's the disruptors to so more easily target it down, of course, hits an archon. Same same story, right? I mean, everything's more easily targeted down without the uh, EMPs available, but I think that was uh, a really good set of EMPs. The important units to target down become much more vulnerable there, so 
We are going to try and make a drop into the main again, though, so we'll see how that ends up going as we get in here and we get rid of the Templar Cannon Battery. Okay, well, actually not a bad start of this at all. As we do have units chasing this down, Bjorn's back in the way with his main army. He's got a couple of Zealots, I believe, in his natural again. As right now, he just continues to kind of fight out and around. We're all going to be seeing those Zealots in a DT actually doing a lot of damage. So, Bjorn loses everything in the main base. He loses a lot of workers in his natural. Obviously, he's killed some workers himself. Now, this entire army moving back home was almost part of the problem, right? You move that much back home all at once, and you're just losing so much of your potential continued pressure on the map. And that's obviously never really going to be a good thing, as, as yeah, I mentioned before. A whole bunch of SCVs going down. We are going to have our Fusion Core now building as well, though, so... We're thinking about range liberators here. It's not a bad map for libs. You know, it's a lot of choked areas, a lot of narrow pathways to move up and down. So it would not be a bad pathway or a bad map for libs in general if we end up there. This big army of Bjorn is once again moving up. He's actually going to catch Colossi with the Viking count already. Well, that's actually not a bad start. The Vikings are like, do we go for the next one? Well, the indecision's costing Bjorn units, right? He's just sat taking fire. As we are now going to move down this ramp and start denying a whole bunch of stuff. The storm didn't connect. And it's a good EMP. Really good EMPs again. The EMPs have been fantastic from Bjorn repeatedly. As he is going to now once more dodge back. Another disruptor shot doesn't land here. We re-engage in. Oh, he stepped forward there, and that maybe wasn't the best of calls. Nothing happening on the map from Greater. It's just about this defense at the moment. Oh, Bjorn's getting the confidence to just chase on forward. Targeted down some of the disruptors, but his units are such low HP. He'll bring the Vikings back in as he sees the chance to kill Colossi. He will kill two of the disruptors, but the other one will fire. Oh, are the Vikings going to do one last volley? Yes, kills the Colossus. And Bjorn sets up to maybe drop back down, still in an aggressive position. Some reinforcements catch a DT of all things. And Bjorn is moving to fourth base into position two. All of his units feel like they're low HP, low energy. But then the reinforcements arrive and he just gets the disruptor in time. And that's going to be Bjorn crushing through. Because now those disruptors have nothing to stop him chasing. And that just means he can get rid of a whole bunch of them. And a lot of tech goes down all at once and Bjorn is absolutely going to solidify himself in a winning position here in game number three, as Breda really just lost everything in that fight. Man, back and forth action, the trade-outs were fantastic, the fights were brilliant, and in the end, Bjorn just gets one or so better engagements, just gets clipped by this disruptor, because initially he decided to try and chase it, then a moment later decided not to. He's going to kill the Robo here, he could unpower the other one, actually... It's still powered because there's a power on the top, but it doesn't matter. It's not going to change the game, and that is Bjorn going to be taking this to a 2-1 lead in this best of five. Well, five game series, all five maps get played no matter what. Really fun games, actually. As we have in the bottom left corner, our red Terran player from the shop of Fire Rebellion does take a 2-1 lead. If he does win this map, we play game five anyways. That's just how this works. All maps give out some prize money, about $40 a map win. As Creator looking to rack up a little bit more prize money in the top right, he is our blue Protoss player from Team NV. And uh, thank you so much. If then else, drop in the Prime sub in the chat. See guys, it's always worth reminding people of the Primes because people have Primes that they forget about. Or that they haven't used. Thank you so much, I really appreciate the Prime. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gateway dropping into the main base, seeing as we all get an assembler to go in as well. So what build creator uses this time? We've had a bit of a mix and match of build orders so far. And it's been uh, fun to follow, actually, just seeing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Bjorn started up 1-0 in this, Creator tied it up with that proxy uh, Stargate, and then the double, and then the Phoenix build in the last game went the way of Bjorn 2 eventually. One more game is like Game 3. Game 3 was fun. Back and forth, kind of felt like Creator had some opportunities. I'll tell you what, for all the counter attacks Creator had, there was only really one where he dealt a reasonable amount of damage. Let's just get ourselves into this orbital on the way up, and a reactor opening from Bjorn. So he's just going to get his expansion down with what will be a, a boosted marine camp pretty quickly here because you're going reactor early. 
This can lead you into a three racks opening because then you've just got extra marines, so you're that little bit more powerful in the three racks. Of course, a lot of builds can just have a boosted marine count and then be good as well, so it doesn't have to be the marines. We will see it very soon, I'm sure. Marines put some damage on the probe, the CC low ground, you're not trying to play any mind games with like a high ground wall off or anything, like I said earlier, that's something that he has been known to do lately. Twilight Council is building. I do know, and a, and a robo before the twilight's done as well, so Dark Shrine or 4 gate Blink. Oh, it's an okay map for 4 gate Blink. I kind of get the vibes of like a Dark Shrine from Creator though. I don't know, just, just feeling the, the Dark Shrine I think. Let's see what happens. Probe's in position, so it is a Dark Shrine. You know, I, I don't know how to explain, but sometimes you just get vibes it's going to be one build rather than another, and I think I feel like this time I was really just feeling the DTs. I don't think it's a, a great, like, it's not a bad map for the Blink, but, like, it's also not, like, there's better maps out there if you want to kind of go full gate Blink as well. So, not that they're, not that those better maps actually are remaining in the map, pool, so maybe it still would have been a reasonable time to use it. He's Marines showing up off this reactor first, and Bjorn's going to get himself some probe kills here, and this is a really good start. Battery's just not finished, right? And without a finished battery, well, that's one Adept, six probes. And of course, you've got to build this battery anyway, just in case, you know, you can't just cancel it now, right? You may as well let it finish, so... An Adept, six probes, and you commit into the battery anyways at the end of it all. Bjorn actually gets a really, really good trade out here to begin with, and he'll be very happy with that, as he's going to have another wave of units soon. And he's building a siege tank, he's still cranking out marines. Of course, the Dark Shrine is the question mark, because there's not going to be a raven here at least, so that's going to be one positive for Creator, no raven to go up against. So that'll be definitely something he'll look at with a little bit of a smile on his face. Obviously then, an the engineering bay is already going to be done here though, so when the engineering bay is done, if there's turrets up, those DTs might not get much of an opportunity anyway. This DT is moving forward. Scans are available from Bion as well, though, so... Well, it's looking pretty good to maybe just hold on and not have too many issues as the first DT shows up. Of course, it's a question of where your units are at. DT in the natural, and there's DTs in the main base as well. This one's supported by the Prism, so you don't really want to scan here because... Mm, scanning here pretty much means you're not going to get the DT kill because you just lift up and leave. The scan on the DT on the natural would have maybe made more sense, but then... He's already evacuated the natural, so you really just want that DT to be brought away from the main. So, it does cost you a scan 8 work, because it's actually not bad at all from Kareda. Of course, you've got to remember that this is him basically evening out the game, whereas he would have much rather been taking a lead in the game. So, okay, I mean, a couple more workers, and it definitely feels like it's going a bit better for Kareda here. Uh, so, yeah, happy for Kareda. As these Archons come in, and... They put out a little bit of damage. These Marines come in from the right side too. Gonna force those Archons to lift off and escape away. Another DT around the side. Thinking about making a showing. This one gets caught and st stepped to be killed. Archons are back in the main still and that Cyclone keeps locking onto things that aren't the Prism. That Cyclone locks onto the Prism, it forces the Prism back much sooner, right? The Cyclone dealing damage to an Archon doesn't matter, because the Archon's just going to lift and get away, but if you put damage on that Prism, you put it in danger of being picked off, then the Archons have to retreat much sooner. So we're just imagine you're wanting to try and prioritize that, and he probably is, it's just not really, you know, it's not really come to fruition just yet, he's not really had the chances as well as he might have liked. Let's shut down an Observer, which is always good anytime you can remove that sort of information from your opponent, you're going to be pretty happy for the most part. There's a game blink coming up, Shadow DT blink as well. We're even going to get ourselves a stalker kill in the middle of the map, so you're going to be pretty happy with all of that. As our war prism is going to start moving through the top, and these few stalkers are going to 
Come in to respond to this now. No blink, right? So they take a little while to get you. If you have a scan right now as Bjorn, you're going to kill this DT and you can continue into this main quite nicely. Going to find an immortal as well, right? He wait for the barrier to go off on it, though. Not going to get the immortal kill. Medivacs are low, but they are going to be out of here for the moment, at least so. Not too concerning. As again, disruptive production continues. Blink and check DT blink still on the way, but soon to be done. Uh, we'll see if those disrupt uh, if those disruptors can connect. We'll see if the DT blink can be used successfully harassing. And of course, the blink on the stalkers is always useful to have as well. So is actually going to come on the map and apply some pressure right now. Take a chance to maybe see if they can do anything. As that DT blink just finished up as well, so another nice little something. We're actually going to have the Stalkers blink in the main with Archon support. Wow, that's a brave move. These Stalkers don't have blink right now. Yikes. Ooh, that was not it, guys. That is not how you play this. That was absolutely freaking brutal. Like, are you kidding me? That is so much damage taken. As now the Stalkers take a step forward, the Marine Marauder is going to turn around jump back on these stalkers but there's just barely any of them the prism was actually just in warping mode to the left side if he knew about that as Bjorn, he could have stimmed on that and killed it while it was in warping mode it can't back away soon enough so okay now a dt shows up on the army crit doing what he can to improve this situation but uh yeah it was not a pretty situation word of mine goes off on an arc on that dodges it maybe would have been worth retargeting if that was a possibility didn't happen As our bio army comes through, Prism gets picked up. And these few Zelts are still going down. A few SCVs have fallen as well. Bjorn obviously getting rid of the Prism removes one of the major threats on the map for him. So he can focus now maybe on just going across the map. That would actually be kind of nice. Just going across the map here and actually being able to deal damage without having to worry about whatever else is going on behind this. And obviously, with the Archons gone as well, that's huge, but these Disruptor shots are massive. He stimmed in to try and kill them there, but he lost a good chunk of his bio initially. Now does he have the numbers to continue? Well, he will kill this Disruptor. Kills a lot of the Zealots there, but I don't think you have enough to continue the fight. DT just going to move forward as well. Nip just going to shade into the uh, mineral line here and is just going to be coming through for a couple of SCV kills. So, done some damage out. Bio army stimming down. Target firing a depot. That's a misclick from Bjorn, of course. Kills his own depot. Finally turns onto the adept. Bjorn going to put himself close to a supply block. <laughs> Pushing to the front then. This bio army is still trying to break through. The Colossus that obviously somewhat keep it at bay as well. Our Widow Mines are going to unburrow. And they're just going to collect back up as everything loads up together. They're going to boost to the side. And Bjorn really going to try and just stay hyper-aggressive at the moment. We are on a third CC. Not morphed into an orbital yet, but it is just moving over now into position. I'm actually intrigued that he chooses the... Um... I didn't think he was going to choose the... Um... Yeah, the, the right side base. And he doesn't. He actually goes forward here to this base, but... For a moment, it looked like he was moving through the bottom side to the 6 o'clock. Obviously, in the end, he did not. Bio army pushing through. Widow mine shot connects. Some all gets hit. Barrier goes down. Another Widow mine shot lining up. Target fired the Stalkers, and they... Well, one of them blinked back, but a couple of them did get splashed, at least. Then we'll turn and fight 1-1 one, one against 0-0, zero, zero, by the way. Worth mentioning, Bjorn has a pretty sizable upgrade lead at this point in the game. Definitely has uh, that going for him a little bit, as we just have ourselves... Still this uh, prism moving forward and a couple more DTs warping in. Libs coming up. Libs are going to be a massive aid in this defense. Just hold down a position, make it that much tougher to really push through. Or that much expensive to push through into one of these positions. And those few Zell's just getting picked away at. So unable to really get in here. Create a... I feel like definitely eating up the uh, the weakness of the 0, zero at the moment. There's something in the natural of Creator from Bjorn, a Liberator sieging. But Stalkers are the ones taking the hits, and they are healed up by the battery. So 
Also can see Major as Abai Army moves forward. Zealots coming into this still. They're going to keep on getting picked off. These Immortals going down. I mean, now that Colossus goes down too, this entire army is just going to be in run the hell away mode. And there's the Prism glows up the Archon that can evacuate. The Stork is obviously escaping away for the most part too. Well, 16 workers going down. So Bjorn has not escaped that without taking some damage at least, but again, it's what is left on his army right now, and his army is just very powerful, and he knows it. In terms of just mostly just size, but these libs as well, I think, are really big. Ooh, he unseeged the libs just as Kredit now makes the move forward. He will re-siege them. Let's see. I mean, Bio is actually kind of low HP going into this fight, but the Liberators, man, they removed the Archons from that equation immediately, so... They just got cancelled out, and the next thing you know, Freddy just doesn't have the numbers. Now he's running away with these Stalkers. They can blink. And the Marauders are kind of low HP, right? These Medivacs are drained of energy. So it's not pretty still. And we've even got some DTs that are maybe looking for a blink on top of this, or just to show up. Oh, they come in. One dies, two blink away. The Stalkers are still stuck top left-hand side, by the way. And Bjorn is, I think, aware of that. Or at least acknowledging it could be the case. Maybe they recall out... The Stalkers can flank, and maybe they can get on top of those Liberators. Maybe this is a saving grace right now as Zealots as move through. Here come these Stalkers. See, you know, I mean, so many Marauders on the back again. Rid of Stalkers. Bjorn will take this game. 3-1. to one. So Bjorn, 3, Crater 1. GG's. Let's dive into Game 5. This is going to be my last game of StarCraft 2 today. As in the bottom left-hand corner, our blue Protoss player will be Creator from Team NV. See if you can get one more map. Again, every map is worth prize money, so this is why we play all five maps. He is in the bottom left-hand side. Is in the bottom right, our red Terran player from the Shopify Rebellion. It is Beyond. All right, then. Fifth map. Let's see what's going to happen. I don't know. And I do think this TVP has been fun, though. Lots of back and forth games. Lots of moments where Creator probably just a better fight just probably saves him a little bit, right? Just It's just, you know what I mean? It's like very close stuff. Like very difficult to differentiate between them all. I mean, there's a lot of fights there that Boone could have absolutely lost a lot more in, and then the game completely swings in the other direction, so... A few things to watch out for. What comes up nibbling on the SCV? I don't get it. If it's a best of five, then why are they still playing? Well, I would explain it again, but if you didn't hear it the first time, why would you hear it this time? Because all maps are played. It's not really a best of five. It's five games played in each game. Each map has its own prize pool. But we don't have a better way to show that on the overlay. Like, I can turn that off and it just have it be blank, but then people will be like, hey, is it a best What? what is it a best of four? Is it a best of ten? Is it a best of twenty-seven? So, there's, there's just no winning. Gotta take one of the questions. It's five best of ones. Which is a horrendous way of saying it, because if you play five best of ones against the same player in a row, that's just not really, like... It's just, it's just kind of dumb. Like, it's just, it's just dumb to call it a best of one, because they're still gonna play another game, you know? It's just five games played. Best of five. Four maps. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. It's a, but but the thing is, it's like, why call it a best of one when it's just a map? You know, a best of suggests that after the best of, someone is a winner, and it's done. But then they play another map, so in which case it's just kind of silly. So to say it's five best of ones, you, you may as well say it's five maps. You know.
Adept is going to shade up this ram. Stalker gets pushed down, and the bunker will settle down as well. So we're going to get this set up to defend the initial pressure. Just going to move our Marines forward to try and fight with the uh, Stalker a little bit. As again, Blink coming through. Warp Gate is coming up. So far, so good. I'm just going to see our Adept uh, poking forward, and Stalker going to get a little bit more damage done as well. Marines taking some hits. So a little bit of action early. Blink is on the way behind this and then Gates and then the Robo much later. This shouldn't be too aggressive. We should be looking toward a third base at some stage here, I'd imagine. Uh, Beyond obviously already on that very fast three base setup and then into this bio place. So going from there. Adept is going to shade around. Again, just going to see the factory coming up. Stimpak plus one. All of this continuing through at the moment. Still seeing our Adept. Shading up the ramp and trying to get in to see if there's any damage to be done, which honestly there is not. It's going to have our Marine still pulling around as well. I'm yeah, just pretty chill at the moment. This nation going to be moving into the main. Just going to see, obviously, uh, a little bit of a scout's always nice. Got to see those diamonds. Straight to the Robo Bay and the Forge. I mean, it's kind of bad that Crater is 5 minutes 20 in this game and is only just on a third against such a fast third base of Bjorn. That's definitely a little bit concerning. Game paused. Quick pause here from Bjorn. This will be get this going. Bjorn has to order his food before <laughs> before it shuts. for one more time as it's still a discussion in the chat this is a five maps played series all five maps get played every map is worth money it's not a best of five i know it says best of five i, I said this before too but if we turn it off it, like some people will just ask is it a best of seven is it best of nine it's just five maps played there you go <laughs> <laughs> I I a hundred percent understand this problem. I I really do. I uh when I when I used to cast ESL year, you know, obviously I cast from five until like eleven. So uh, you know, sometimes you gotta order before your favorite place is shut. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get resumed here in a moment or two. As uh, <laughs> Bjorn orders some food, <laughs> I mean, a <laughs> great time to take a break. Game I can appreciate that. I really can appreciate that pause, guys. Can't I just put five maps played instead of best of five by the score? No, I don't write this. It's a command. It's it's in the game. So I yeah, I could remove it and write it in, but like, how am I gonna fit five maps played in this little? little box it doesn't make sense you know what did he order i i assume chicken man <laughs> i apparently paused for fried chicken so i assume he got chicken with i'm sure there's some kind of certain level of spice that you get maybe you got a mix maybe you got a combo i don't know i don't blame it. i mean the thing is though you're, you're playing a like you go into this game and you, you play a 3cc so surely you know surely you know that this game's gonna last until the place shuts. So why don't you just order it before the game? You know? T 
see if Bayoon's able to grab a Stalker and just going to be getting rid of that. Boss is moving forward here as well as we do see Force Fields down, but only one Marine getting lasered. I'm just going to be seeing that Bio back onto these rocks, so I wanted to just clean this up, give himself more options. Generally, the Protoss is the one that obviously benefits from narrower pathways and, you know, locations where units are just more generally stacked up. So, Beyond just trying to remove those from the game. Just going to get this set of rocks as well. Yeah. Makes sense. Easier to collapse, easier movement. And honestly, I mean, this is also a pathway for him to attack on because... Attacking through the southern pathway is dangerous because of those slow zones, so now you have a much better attack or retreat pathway, depending on which one you want to use. Medivac's going to load up, going to drop into the main, and obviously that's something which uh, Freya didn't see right away, so he's going to actually have his forge targeted here, but the marines can't get in range. If he had all the marines in range, he probably gets the kill on it. Now he does? I think he still gets the forge. No, it survives. Well, that's Bjorn just not moving his units into range before they all attack, right? That's absolutely avoidable by Bjorn. Uh, so that one's kind of on him. That one is absolutely on him, in fact, as this prism sets up to make, make a move into the main. We're going to Chrono Boost that forge and uh, get some just get some pro progress on that plus one armor. Obviously, has two medivacs of units given up for pretty much zero gain at the end, right? So, a little bit of a shame as we get ourselves with this prism on the bottom side. Marines will get that solid in the end, so able to pick that off. And just going to sit behind this goal, trying to deny that a little bit. You can see Bjorn with that bottom side base that he took, the forward one. That means he can push more easily, right? It's a position he can push forward from a lot better. It means Krita, in theory, might be able to push into that position more easily. But then I assume Bjorn's going to have, like, somewhat of a defensive setup around there. I love this CC. It's not placed on the fourth base, but it's placed close to it. He's given a bit of respect to potential counterattacks from Krita. Doesn't want to have himself uh, too many issues getting a fourth up and running. As this prism still unable to make a play in the main. Usually you could probably fly past a turret if you really wanted to, but with the slow zone, you will take way too much damage before that happens. So that's something you've got to be concerned about for sure. Let me just chilling on the high ground as we do see an extra round of units warping in. Well, scan comes down, and a couple of medivacs are going to load up and start to make their way through the top sides as well. The salt gets picked off. Bio army still moving around a little bit. Let's push on through. These stalkers are going to be forced to blink away at the moment, so. I'm just going to see our prison still around the top and our bio army again looking as though I might want to try and set up a collapse in onto this army of creator. And well, obviously hitting the back of the gold base works too and that's obviously a lot of boosted income which is good to deny as well. So that works. Absolutely. Anyway, four libs building at a time as well. So Bjorn knows what he wants to do in this game. Libs worked wonders last time around as well. There's that Zalek run by that we were kind of talking about before, but I wouldn't have denied the fourth base anyway based on the timing of it. Two more Stalkers just warping in. Marie Marauder loading back up into the Medivax. I'm going to come around this top left corner and think about where they want to dive in the end. Keeping pressure on the map, obviously, again, that lip count building up here, but we are now maxed, so... Fred is taking a step towards his further attack with a Stargate, even getting Observer Speed. Providic boosters on the way, to get those Observers speeding around the map. She is kind of a nice upgrade late in the game, as DTs try to catch themselves a, um... Building CC, but they end up sniped to Oblivion, so... Nice little shutdown from Bjorn, and nice to snipe them, make sure they don't get away. 
That's great. It's going to go into Storm. Now, Storm can also be useful here against the uh, Liberators, right? If those Libs stack too much, you get some Storms on them. It won't kill them in one go, but it definitely uh, hurts them a lot and makes it much easier to then work through them with everything else. Nice catch against these Ghosts here on the top as well. It's behind, behind on the upgrades, so one thing to keep in mind is some of these skirmishes around the map happen that Beyond is working behind on the upgrades in general. Something I'm sure he's going to look to try and catch up on over time here. Oh, we're even going to get uh, rapid reignition systems, the Medivac boost upgrade. That's a rarity. Hey, you've got a fusion core, you've got a bit of money to spare. It is, it is an upgrade, it does help. <laughs> it does go a little way towards aiding you, so uh, I guess you go for it as... As Al gets picked off, Bio goes moving forward. Lib's going to see your massive EMPs there. Is, it was a good last minute split as well. The EMPs are still good if you can get up this ramp and take advantage of that. The Swift Shot turns into just one goes. If these Libs can push though as well, right? With this army and kind of keep this army pushed around. This is scary because right now this gold base is going to be in some serious trouble. It might actually have to just be forfeited. I mean, Archon's trying to move in to help. They're not going to help. Super Battery's active. The EMP the base down a little bit. It's still being healed. I mean... Yeah, well, we've got an army around the right side. So, Kray's looking to come in from a second angle here. Yun going to pull these libs back. Get the lib set up on the other direction. He will finish the Nexus. I don't think Creator stops that from happening. And then this army on the right actually just looks very weak now. Like, a couple Colossi Disruptors. Bjorn's just going to make his way up over here. Now, he doesn't have the lib support here, so he might have to run back to the lib support. He doesn't want to unsiege it all because he's afraid of the potential flank in. As carriers are coming through, he's still building libs. Libs are surprisingly good against the carriers. As he, oh, he gives up a lot of his Vikings to not get the Colossus. He loses every Viking there. Bad decision from Bjorn, especially with the carriers coming up. I was going to say the libs are good against carriers because they can splash down all the interceptors really quick. So that might be a saving grace of Bjorn here that he doesn't realize just yet as Disruptors. Kills one, splits from the other, but this unit count is really hurting. Just such low HP. I mean, Liberators were doing really well, but the Stalkers get to the other side of them, and then they get cleaned up for free at the end. I mean, fun moment or two. As Bjorn definitely seems to be getting into more and more trouble at the end of it all. Yep, those carriers are definitely going to be the one thing that Kratos get into that I don't think Bjorn has... I mean, even if the, the libs are good against the Interceptors, it's not immediately something that Bjorn's ready to deal with, right? He's not been thinking about how he's going to be dealing with that as our bio units. Continue down here, and those Zelts continuing to get struck down. Let's keep on getting picked off. A command that gets killed as well. An orbital's gonna lift. And just gonna be seeing our uh, few units around the upper right as well, also getting going. Well, Stork's getting picked off as that Nexus falls. Bio Army still chasing this down. It's gonna be seeing the Observer getting picked off too, as we do see. I mean, the stack of carriers. The thing is, Korea's getting so much done, plus the carriers are just sat at home building up in numbers. That's going to be the real problem for Bjorn. That he's not going to have a real way to deal with that as the Marauder gets shot down. Disruptor shots keep on flying in. They keep on connecting. Looking very, very good across the board here. It's just going to be seeing our probe counts. Taking some hits. I mean, he's actually going to send the carriers to deal with the libs. So, hello. Meet my carriers. I've got a few of them right now, and away they go. I mean, they should join up with the main army now, right? Just go join up with the main army, see what can be done there. Mm -hmm. Libs, sieging up on this. I mean, the Stalker Cow not really doing much to get rid of the Libs. Not really target firing well at all. What are the rest of these Libs doing? They're going to siege up as well. Siege is one on the gold base. I was going to jump on this. I mean, again, the carriers are just still not here. We kill the Disruptor that's firing. I mean, the Libs are still chasing this down, but the Carriers are now going to start killing the Libs one by one overall. Bjorn is still coming out worse for wear in this trade-out, as Crit just has a little bit too much. Fighting for this final map, find a little bit of prize money boost today. As he continues to push on through, this Depot going down, this turret taking some hits. And uh, just going to see a few more Stalkers to warp in with the rest of that as well. So all of that's setting up as we do see our Carriers trying to get back in action. 
set of rocks going to take some damage too. That missile turret will drop. As these rocks get opened up, I think we can make a pretty nice play. And down this ramp and over the right hand side, perhaps, as they're really just. There isn't much left for Bjorn. I mean, he's got a few ghosts. Tries to storm. Uh, tries to snipe, sorry, but the storm cancels it. He does get one snipe off in the end. Bjorn obviously losing bases here as the carriers still are an unanswered question from Creator. He will move on through and. Well. Yeah, I mean, disruptors to force this back. Has to be a little careful still. Lib's still sieging too. Like I said before, Lib's are good against the interceptors if there's enough of them to splash them all down at once, but that's not really been the case here, right? That's not really been the case in question in the slightest. There's a couple more Lib siege, and this army of Creator will have to just sit out the side. Now they're getting that Viking, but not quite. Great is maxed, and again, with the denial of bases, he's going to be moving up to six base versus four. Uh, Beyond looks as though he wants to retake the gold, but we'll see how effective that really is in the near future with uh, everything gathering up. Still a good amount of Vikings on the way through. As Viking Liberator pressing forward, big storm on those Vikings. Jeez, that's painful. I was just going to see our interceptors. Being cleaned out just a little bit. Army back to the middle of the map here, and we've got a Liberator just sat in the corner. PT showing up a few SCVs being swiped down. Bjorn still not comfortable here. I mean, his Viking count has gotten to be good. If you can target fire down carrier after carrier, they will drop. And had a few units in the main base not brought into the fight as Freda will take a step back, chill a little bit. of calm before the EMP storm and before that whirl of interceptors, the tornado of interceptors almost goes firing forward. We know that's going to do a lot, right? Oh, one carrier goes down. This is where you do need to be turning and fighting. Two carriers down for free, creator. Yeah, gets a storm off, gets another. Nice, nice, but, you know, you're losing carriers still. Man, that was a lot of carriers killed. Creator just loses a chunk of stuff and really avoidable as well. I mean, that's the sort of moment where you should just be confident to turn and fight. This Terran army doesn't have that much power in it, I don't think. Like, if these Vikings are generally just being attacked, they can't just chase and fight like that, and you're at least getting value out of this. This was a good chase down from Bjorn. Kill base doesn't have much left on it, but what is there will be denied for now. As Bjorn knows the power of shutting down the goal, but again, it's probably just prolonging the last little bit of life on this base. Not the end of the world, Critter. Looks like he wants to start fighting into it. Blinks forward to try and get the Vikings. This time we're actually going to commit and look at those Vikings drop. Obviously they're low HP to begin with here as Disruptor Shot will chase as well. Trying to cut off the Ghost Escape Path. This time it really is beyond losing so many units. The Interceptor count is still healthy. About half Interceptors left on each of those carriers at least. Disruptor Shot's firing like crazy. Storms on the new Vikings on the bottom side. Carrier count down to just three, but I mean the Disruptor count is good. There's two Colossi here. The Stalkers are looking reasonable as well. The Supply is absolutely in Creator's favor. And there's even a DT in a very cute position in that Mineral Line. Just sitting out of the Liberator range. But Bjorn knows that altogether this game is done. GG's and Creator is going to take this um, this match. Well, this map. 2-3 uh, to three in the end of the final scoreline. Bjorn takes 3 and Creator takes...